Um, hi everyone. Um, thank you for inviting me uh, at this seminar. So yes, indeed, I will talk about the physical economy of France. Uh, I decided to change the title uh, and to discuss the social metabolism of French capitalism. So, um, well, basic motivations to begin. Um, so yeah, well, the current debates on the needed social ecological transformations require, uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, deeper understanding of capitalism dynamics, that is uh, capital matters, and biophysical flows dynamics. Matter matters too. And we believe that uh, joining uh, uh, different literature, uh, we can have a better understanding of uh, 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 environmental issues. So I will uh, <coughs> explain how I proceed uh, to link material flow analysis uh, with long-run long analysis of ca capitalism dynamics. Uh, because I think it's really, <coughs> it's really nice to, to, to open the black box uh, uh, of the <laughs> sphere of production of uh, research and how, how uh, uh, concretely uh, one can uh, link those uh, analysis together. Um, and I will show uh, many works, uh, past and ongoing works, and I will talk a little bit about Fordism and oil, which is a, uh, a really an, uh, um, important topic actually because uh, I think we can have a debate with uh, Robert Boyer, uh, but I think it was uh, 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 one reason uh, that uh, uh, led uh, uh, regulation theory to exclude uh, oil from uh, its uh, uh, framework. The crisis of Fordism uh, 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 was one reason, among others, uh, to exclude Fordism, uh, oil from its framework. And I will also uh, uh, talk about financialization. Well, and many other, uh, 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 many other objects. So to begin with, uh, I have a few slides about framework and methodology. I, I, I really uh, think it's important to talk about this part uh, because you, you feel directly the inter interdisciplinary uh, uh, aspect of the work. And you, you feel that uh, many questions arise. You, you need to, to, to think about different aspects and uh, the, the story and the, 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 the narrative that you will, uh, uh, that you will, oop, that you, that you, you, you will uh, uh, show uh, can completely change following uh, your framework and your questions and uh, the, your data. So, well, the basic point is uh, we say that societies must reproduce themselves not only socially but also biophysically. That is, uh, every economic system uh, needs um, biophysical flows, energy flows, material flows, nitrogen flows, water, etc. Et and therefore, we can use tools from ecological economics. Then, uh, from the other side, to study capitalism uh, uh, accumulation, uh, capital accumulation dynamics, then, well, we, you have many, many interesting uh, frameworks. Uh, of course, uh, regulation theory is one of them. But you can also um, use world system theory or uh, any, uh, any Marxist theory. Uh, well, you, you see that the, the way how you conceptualize capitalism is uh, uh, already one, one issue. Uh, uh, if you think capitalism uh, in uh, Piketty's way, uh, then you have one story. If you uh, think, uh, uh, if you conceptualize capitalism uh, uh, um, through regulation theory, then you will have another, another history and so forth. Well, since I, I, I am interested in long-term visions, I 
I usually uh, adopt uh, the regulation theory. Um, but they are complementary for uh, sometimes, you know, they, they, they don't, well, sometimes, of course, uh, 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 different frameworks uh, are, are exclusive, but they, they, you, you, it depends really on, on what, what, you're, what you want to study. Uh, so here I will talk a lot about long-term visions and periodizations and trajectories. That's why I'm, interesting, uh, I'm more interested in regulation theory. Well, there are already some propositions. Uh, actually, starting from world system, you have uh, um, the World Ecology Framework, which uh, was developed by Jason Moore. Um, then, starting from theory of unequal exchange, you have uh, an ecological theory of unequal exchange, which is really, really interesting. I, I, one of my favorites which was developed by Ornborg, but also uh, Dorninger, and th there are many articles now um, which are following this, this framework. Well, basically, uh, those two theories, or those two frameworks, they, they explain the development of capitalism by uh, showing the unequal uh, trade flows, mainly, between uh, some, different, some world regions. So they show that, uh, I, I will show an example later, but just to have an idea. Uh, they show that, for instance, uh, 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 some countries, uh, they receive a lot of energy and uh, uh, ghost uh, 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 hectares, uh, acres, um, uh, labor, and, and so forth from abroad. And so they, they, they pursue the, the, the theory of unequal exchange uh, which was uh, uh, based on the idea that the dev development produced underdevelopment in other countries. So th those, those, those two uh, uh, propositions are quite similar. Then, um, if we look at the regulation, the regulation theory, uh, well, we are a little bit disappointed because, uh, well, for many years, uh, there were very few papers and they ignore uh, environmental issues since apparently since the very beginning. And I, I will try to explain why. I have some, some I, I think I, 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 there are good explanations. And, and we will see that we can complement uh, regulation theory maybe to, 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 to improve it or to, to improve its framework. Well, that's, that's some propositions. Well, now, Let's uh, introduce the metabolism. Uh, well, this is Brussels metabolism. You can study the metabolism of every system. So you can study the metabolism of one city, one department, one region, uh, one uh, country, and so forth. Well, so if you study the metabolism of Brussels city, then, well, you see waste. Uh, you can detect here oil, uh, 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 gas, uh, coal electricity, emissions, CO2, uh, export, exports, imports, and so forth, okay? So this is the description of uh, the metabolism, of Brussels metabolism in 77. Um, well, I, I think that's really interesting. I, I, I like it. I, I like to, 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 to see all those flows, but uh, I believe that you, you, you can't uh, uh, understand ecological crisis only using uh, those flows? Uh, because that, that's my question. Uh, are, are these flows free from institutions, conflicts, and power relations? I mean, where, where are our institutions here? It's like magical, no? Uh, uh, and that's, that's part of, uh, uh, that's a problem. And that's why you have now many engineers which are developing uh, uh, metabolism studies and in some way, Jean Covici is doing that. Uh, uh, he is like uh, with a technical approach, and uh, uh, he doesn't care about many uh, 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 institutional aspects. So that's that's problematic. But well, you you have an idea of what's the metabolism of one of one city, and I I, I thought that's what, that was interesting. Well, now to introduce regulation theory really briefly, <laughs> uh, we have yeah the one master here, but I I. I take his definition. So regulation theory describes the social and economic 
patterns that enable accumulation to occur in the long term between two structural crises. These regular patterns as a whole are summarized by the notion of accumulation regime. So now we have the, the notion of accumulation regime that's, that's really important for, uh, uh, what, what, uh, the, the, for what's coming. Uh, and then you have uh, here a, a graph which is uh, summarizing Fordism. And you have institutional forms, uh, the state, monetary, monetary for form, uh, the, the, the wage uh, nexus, and so forth. But, well, we feel a little bit disappointed because uh, apparently these accumulation regimes are floating, or we don't know. Uh, I, I, am, I am provoking you, but uh, it's only to introduce uh, uh, the pitfalls of both frameworks. So, now, what I want to explain briefly is I want to, to explain how, how you, you, you bring uh, uh, material flows into uh, regulation theory. So, this is the description of uh, uh, the meta the, a country metabolism. So, let's say France. So, I, I will briefly uh, describe some indicators so that you can understand uh, the, the graph. Because I will show a lot of graphs after. So you have imports. Uh, oh yeah, uh, I'm too, too short. <laughs> you, 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 well, you have domestic extraction, uh, imports and exports. Uh, domestic extraction comes from the environment and uh, goes into the national uh, economy. Uh, and then you have also imported hidden flows. Those flows uh, are really important uh, in, the, the, in, the, in our debate. Uh, I will explain later. You, you have waste, and a really important part are those social economic stocks. That is the built environment, infrastructure, uh, uh, houses, and so forth. And so to compute uh, the domestic material consumption, you need to add uh, domestic extraction plus imports minus exports, okay? So the physical trade balance uh, equals imports minus exports, okay? So then you have everything that the, the, the country uh, consumed uh, minus exports, okay? And of course, as I said, you can uh, uh, do, uh, uh, you can uh, 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 apply the same for uh, one city, department, or, or one economic sector, actually. Now, how did I proceed? Uh, how do you build a database and not just download? Uh, it's funny because now uh, many people just go on the OECD uh, website and they download, they click, and they have a nice Excel sheet and, and they have a, a database, a ready to use database. But uh, uh, if you want long-term uh, data, well, then you, you need to go to the archives and to work, <laughs> and it takes time. And uh, so first, find sources. Then, so that's already interesting. Who collects data in the 19th century? Uh, where to find it? Uh, so you, 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 f you search for mines, agriculture, and so forth, custom. Then uh, you, you have a lot of conversions uh, because uh, you, you have uh, you need order than tons, uh, usually in the data, and you need to estimate a lot of uh, coefficients and, and data. So this is to say that uh, it's you, ha you have a lot of uh, uh, arbitrary conventions there. It, it's 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 normal. I mean, uh, uh, and you 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 statistical conventions are, are part of the job, and you need to to decide and to say, okay, this is my convention. And there are uh, now uh, many researchers which are developing nice conventions and you, you can follow one specific convention so that you can compare your work with another uh, uh, work. So that's how you proceed. This is one example of what I found. This is, this is just one example. I have thousands and thousands and thousands of examples. Really, it's like... All the, 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 the French economy, uh, I, 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 I have taken picture of everything. But this is nice because it was a summary. So this, is, this, this was a, a summary of uh, domestic extraction and physical trade balance uh, of iron from 1833 to 19. 
so that was really nice because uh, this summary was in turn, actually. It, no, it was not uh, monetary flows, but r actually material flows. Uh, so I, I was quite happy, and I, I want to describe the, 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 the graph, but you have imports, exports uh, above, and here uh, 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 the production of uh, uh, domestic, uh, domestic extractions, and uh, uh, ah, you have even the price, okay, the average price of iron. So, so you see that the state was collecting data, was really uh, mine by mine, uh, 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 department by department. If you, f if you look for coal, mines, uh, cereals, then you have absolute uh, uh, nice data. You have really nice data if you look at important materials. But then it's al also interesting to, to see that uh, some data are missing. For instance, uh, data, uh, uh, material construction data. It's really hard to find an, uh, an aggregate uh, uh, national data for uh, 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 material construction uh, 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 flows. Uh, I, I found only uh, um, from the late of the 19th century, but you have no data uh, before. And so it's interesting to see why, what's, for what reasons and so forth. Uh, so every time you, 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 you go to the archives, you have n new surprises and you, you have new challenges and you have to, to, to transform also uh, your, your database. Well, now I will show some metabolic shifts and uh, many graphs come from my own work. Then I have also, uh, I will show also uh, new graphs uh, from, from other, other works. So this is domestic extraction uh, for France. And we divide usually uh, material flows into four categories, biomass, metals, uh, non-metal uh, non uh, minerals, and fossil fuels. And so that was already interesting. Um, and you, you see some, some breaks, some crises, and then a huge growth in, uh, during the Fordism, uh, and then a stagnation, okay? But remember that this is only domestic extraction. We have no imports and no exports. So this is only one, one graph showing what, what was extracted from uh, uh, national territory. <laughs> and you see that for the last 30, 40 years, we only extract, I mean, France only extracts uh, biomass and uh, uh, non-metallic minerals. There, there is no mine anymore and no fossil fuel. Uh, a tiny, tiny fl uh, 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 flow of fossil fuel, actually. But now, this, this graph is my favorite one. Uh, it shows the physical trade balance. So um, first, uh, this is per capita. So uh, we divided it by uh, population. Um, so to understand it, it's physical trade balance. So th this means that we, we see net imports and net exports, OK? Um, so we see that we, w we are, so everything which is above the uh, x-axis here uh, this design, uh, describes uh, imp net imports, okay? And this is net exports. So basically, uh, we always, France always imports more material than it exports for, for the whole, whole period. This is really unique. I mean, if you, if you look at the physical trade balance of England, then you will have a lot of coal here because England was exporting a lot of coal in the 19th century, a lot. So this is not, not very common. Even the USA w was exporting a lot of materials for some period. But France uh, uh, had less coal and uh, was always in importing uh, uh, fossil fuel. It was exporting a little bit of uh, uh, iron products and metal products. And for the last 40 years, we are only exporting biomass, only. So we, are net we have net imports of metals, uh, uh, non-metallic non minerals, and fossil fuel. So this was already uh, uh, interesting for us. And we see that uh, French capitalism uh, benefits from uh, 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 other regions. And we, uh, our, our paper was called The History of a Parasite. 
uh, uh, for that reason. Uh, and it is really unique. I mean, uh, if you, it is not because, uh, uh, I mean, uh, you, you have rich countries which are extractive. France is not. That, that's, the, that's the message. Uh, Australia is extractive. Uh, Canada, USA, uh, you have many rich countries and developed countries. And, with, uh, and so they, their capitalism are extractive, but French capitalism is not. In some way, that's, that's a summary of what you see. Um, well, I, I can talk a lot about the, this graph. Uh, just, just to mention that here, uh, well, yeah, I, I, I will, yeah, okay, I, I mentioned it. Uh, what, what happened also in the 70s, you see, well, this is oil. Bel basically, we are importing a lot of oil. And uh, what happens is also the, the nuclear program. So, of course, you don't see it, but uh, it, it is here. Uh, the stagnation is, means also uh, the, 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 that uh, France was developing uh, its nuclear program. I will talk about it because it's a, a big uh, uh, drawback of uh, 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 material flow analysis, and the nuclear uh, uh, flows are really challenging to study because they are tiny. Okay, now I want to. We, I, I just want to focus on the two last accumulation regimes. Let's say from uh, uh, 1945. Um, here I show two two curves. Uh, so the first one is the domestic material consumption. So that is what I, I, I said before: domestic extraction plus imports minus exports. Okay, but uh, domestic material consumption. Uh, ignores uh, the hidden flows uh, which are embodied in uh, uh, imported uh, commodities. Uh, so that's why now we compute the material footprint, MMF, which is the, the, the other curve. And when you compute the material footprint, you, you compute the total quantity of material use induced by a country's final consumption. So you uh, for instance, uh, your smartphone uh, weighs uh, 100 grams, and if you look at its footprint, material footprint, then it weighs, uh, I, don't, I don't know, 50 kilos or something. So, of course, you, uh, the, 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 it changed totally uh, uh, the, the graph. And you see that uh, we add, like, for uh, about uh, 500 millions of tons, which are which uh, uh, are located outside, for instance, in China, in Asia, or uh, Latin America, and so forth. So, um, but what, what we found interesting uh, is that there is a, a accumulation regime translated into socio-metabolic regime. You, you really, I mean, it's not, it's not obvious that a metabolic regime uh, will, will uh, have the same periodization as an accumulation regime, but it, but I mean it's it's clear. You have a break uh, in 74, 73 maybe, and then let's say a stagnation or a small increase m with some deviations. But you, you you really have two trends here, and at, at the macro level, at the aggregate level, of course. And we found that was interesting. Uh, you you have it for both both curves, but you you see that. Uh, uh, the fact that we are importing more and more uh, uh, commodities and materials uh, uh, obscures the, 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 the uh, or he, he invisibilize the, the many flows. Uh, I, I, the, the, the difference between the two curves are those hidden flows from uh, uh, imported, imported goods and commodities. Um, but this is, this is true at the national level. Now, if you study one specific flow, you have another story, because it's not always the, true. So at the, at the, national, at the, the, the national level, uh, we have clearly two trends. And now if you look at uh, uh, specific flows, it's not always true. But well, non-metallic non mineral, it's true. We, we, you, you see fordism, then stagnation. Then for biomass, it is not clear. Biomass, it's 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 has many uh, uh, as as its own logic apparently. Or I mean, 
at least we can say that uh, uh, we don't see any uh, uh, structural break. Um, well, this is uh, for uh, fossil fuel. Well, you can you can see two two different trends, and uh, the last one uh, uh, is the the, gr the last graph shows uh, uh, metal category. Well, I, I don't want to to explain each detail, but just to mention that if you if you look at uh, uh, a disaggregated level, then you see other dynamics, and so that that's that's. Uh, Interesting also because uh, there, there, is, there are important debates uh, in the regulation theory uh, uh, um, team <laughs> or, and about the relations between meso and macro uh, level. Um, and we have the same here. Um, it's, it's, we, have, we see some uh, uh, national uh, uh, macro dynamics and then we, we have uh, 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 meso or sectorial dynamics which are not uh, reflecting exactly the, the, same, the same trends. Well, and just to mention, I, I'm, I'm specifically working on sun and gravel, uh, which is the main material flow. And I just want to mention this uh, number. So that, that's the sun and gravel extraction in France since 1945. By far the, 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 the most important one. By far. So that what, that's also in interesting. And that's what I, I wanted to point here. Uh, material flows uh, uh, um, come uh, uh, with new questions. Because when you, you see those graphs and when you see sun and gravel, you have new, new uh, uh, questions because uh, uh, this does, well, it, it does, does not appear in many, many uh, 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 usual, uh, let's say, economic framework. So from a material point of view, sun and gravel is the most important uh, 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 fact of French economy. That, that's bizarre. Though. So uh, that's what I, I wanted to, to, to point here. Well. Now, I, I won't uh, detail this graph at all, but just to say that uh, we are working with a student of mine on agriculture, but we are studying uh, nitrogen flows. And, uh, well, we see, well, we are still working, so it's ongoing work. Uh, we had to translate material flows in nitrogen flows. And apparently, the two trends are... are uh, um, uh, well, the trends is, is different, th that the, uh, the periodization is different than that one of uh, uh, regulation theory because uh, we have uh, uh, the, the, the break in 1990. And, well, usually the regulation theory describes, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, an agricultural regime, a Fordist uh, uh, regime, and here we, we see that the, the Fordist regime maybe goes uh, uh, until 1990. So that's also, again, to say that we have new questions. Maybe, maybe this is challenging also for regulation theory. Maybe we, they have an explanation. Uh, and they, I, I know they have, actually. <laughs> but uh, uh, you, you, you have new, new, a new point of view on uh, one sector. And maybe it helps to uh, uh, have a better understanding of uh, uh, the dynamics. I don't comment the, the graphs. I, I'm sorry because I have no time now. Now for this manoy, so well that's 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 uh, an important point, and I will try to explain our argument, and which is based actually on the Timothy Mitchell argument, and um, I will ex try to explain uh, the role of uh, coal and oil in uh, the for this regime. <coughs> so. I'm trying here to answer the, the, the question, uh, last question, about the, the why do the temporality of the metabolic regime coincide with the temporality of the accumulation regime? And um, so uh, and, uh, what we wanted to do with Louison Canfouro uh, was to integrate uh, material flows into a regulationist, regulationist uh, uh, explanation. Um, well, now key points uh, of Fordism. Uh, I, those are only uh, uh, key points. Of course, uh, you can uh, characterize Fordism with many, many, many uh, 
uh, uh, through many other aspects. Well, so uh, uh, intensive use of labor, high productivity gains, uh, a new form of the wage relation, strong welfare state. Uh, well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure how familiar you are with Fordism, but usually this is well known, so I, I'm going a little bit quick here. And so accumulation is steered by domestic mass consumption and mass production. So we, you, you have here, uh, this is really uh, important, because of the new uh, wage relation, you have uh, uh, mass production and mass consumption. And well, so this is of course uh, just uh, uh, a, quick, uh, uh, a quick summary of Fordism. Now, what about coal and oil? Uh, because we've seen that France was importing a lot of oil uh, from the 60s, actually. I can show you the graph again. Uh, you see that in the 50s, it was not so important. I mean, France was importing a lot of co uh, oil, but until 59, 60, 61, maybe, uh, it, was, it was not that important. I mean, it was really important, but... but from, let's say, 61 or something until 74, you, you see really something huge. And we wanted to, to understand that. So I will try to explain with some uh, historical uh, aspects. So first, it's really important. Yes. No. Very good question. I, I, w I, will, I will talk about it's it. It's a big difference, I think, in the, in the transfer. Yeah, no. It's only, on, only uh, 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 the, the metropole, uh, France Metropolitan. Yeah. But it's, it's an important question. I, I, w I will talk about it in uh, two slides. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Basically, first, it is important to remember, because uh, some have, may uh, have forgotten that point, that France was extracting a lot of coal first, okay? Uh, there were hundreds of, th of thousands of miners, uh, and the peak of coal extraction was 58, peak of the coal extraction. Then, uh, in 62, there is, uh, uh, until 62, coal was dominate, dominating the, the, the energetic mix, energy mix. So 58, 62, so that, that's more or less when uh, oil uh, become dominant. So um, our analysis, our argument here is based on uh, Timothy, Timothy Mitchell. And I, I, will, uh, I want to insist that uh, this argument is not true for every country in the world I mean, there is no material determinism. <laughs> uh, uh, materials are in social relations, and you need to always uh, study each context and each uh, uh, structure. And it is not, you, you never have a te a technological or material determinism. So, in this case, it works, but I can also explain why it doesn't work for uh, many countries uh, like Norway or England or, okay. But, uh, well, for England, it's, it's, it, it works quite well, um, actually. Well, so coal extraction requires a uh, high concentration of workers, as I said, uh, which made mass social movements and the emergence of organized labor easier. So in brief, uh, there were a lot of communists in France uh, in, the, in the 40s and 50s. Um, and they, they had the expertise. They organized well. They uh, go on strike uh, uh, very often. There were really hard, hard uh, uh, conflicts uh, in 47, 48, 49, and in the, in the beginning of the uh, 50s. Um, moreover, uh, coal was distributed by railroads, which enabled railways workers, which were also uh, in some uh, communist unions, and uh, which were also very well organized. Uh, so they, they could also block its distribution. <coughs> then, uh, in 58, the government uh, decided, it's called the Plan Jeannonet, uh, they decided to close coal mines in 58. 
And because oil was cheaper, and uh, they decided uh, uh, to, to, to stop uh, coal extraction slowly. Uh, slowly, I mean, it was not uh, abrupt, but it, 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 it begins in 58. And so our idea here is to say that coal uh, uh, was important uh, for Fordism uh, in the beginning because those workers uh, were uh, really important in um, social struggles and they, they, they indirectly uh, 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 helped to, to, to build a welfare state, let's say, okay? Um, then, from, uh, it, oh, France was importing uh, a lot of oil uh, from the 60s, and I will show that the oil was coming from Algeria, actually. Uh, and, um, but cheap oil was also good for uh, France for many reasons in the 60s, because uh, there were <coughs> Uh, it helped uh, to, to contribute. It contributed to high productivity gains, to support the new social consumption norm, uh, petroleum-based modes of com of mobility. So, well, let's say uh, uh, the high the, the highways were built in the 60s in France. Uh, uh, it, it was later than in other countries. The, there, you know that the the, the um, car sector was really uh, uh, really important uh, in the 60s and the productivity gains were uh, enormous, and the, the mass consumption of uh, many uh, uh, <coughs> uh, oil-based uh, uh, goods uh, uh, were uh, really increasing. So the, the consumption of, uh, 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 of many plastic goods or, uh, I, I don't know, many, 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 uh, many commodities uh, were, were increasing. Um, so in the 60s, we can say that uh, uh, the cheap oil was, uh, we, we, that's our argument, it helped, uh, it contributed also to, to, to Fordism because also the, the oil was quite cheap. So we still have, uh, and that's important, I think, uh, an endo endogenous change. And this is really uh, what the regulation theory asks. They, they always say that the, the crisis uh, of the accumulation regime uh, must be explained by uh, the, the regulation patterns that w which was helping the regime to, to sustain the regime. And when the, the same patterns be begin to, to, uh, uh, to, f to be uh, 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 or uh, uh, then you, you, you the, 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 the crisis come. And so we, we, we believe that we still have uh, 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 the endogenous change, but we added uh, material flows. That's one argument. Of course, uh, uh, it, it does not explain Fordism and, uh, and in its crisis. But we, we think that it contributed to Fordism and to its crisis. Both. Now, this is uh, to answer your question about uh, uh, colonial territories. And uh, I, 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 I was working with uh, colleagues on, uh, specifically on coal and, and oil recently. And uh, our paper will be available next year, I think. And um, well, I, I discovered, so that's again, I, I went to the archives and I found uh, all the data. And I was really, really surprised because if you see, uh, it's, I, don't know, I don't know if you can see it well, but anyway, those are countries, the main countries uh, uh, F for uh, uh, imported uh, uh, oil imports, and uh, actually, uh, uh, this is Algeria, and uh, this is 1959, 60, 61, and it stops in 70. In 71, actually, the, the uh, petroleum was nationalized uh, in Algeria, and so I was really surprised to see that the the the. The main, uh, uh, the main country uh, for uh, oil imports was Algeria. I was really surprised because uh, we know that the independence comes in 62. So after the independence of Algeria, France was still importing a lot of oil from Algeria for 10 years. And it was by far the, 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 the more, most important country. I, if, you, if you want, I can see, uh, say, this is Saudi Arabia. 
this tiny curve, this is, and then, then it becomes really huge. But, so in the 60s, it's Algeria. And then uh, uh, Iran and Iraq and then, uh, okay, uh, some other countries. But really by far it's Algeria. I, I was really surprised by this graph. So I wanted to show it. I, I, I can't uh, uh, detail this work now. But it, again, uh, in this work with, with uh, uh, my friends and colleagues, we try to, uh, to link material flow analysis with uh, colonial history, uh, 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 the history of Fordism, uh, and so forth. So you, you see an, another connection here. And I found this, is, this was really interesting. And there are important uh, uh, debates in, in history uh, uh, about the role of Algeria. And here you see that you have maybe, maybe it would be nice uh, for those debates to, to because they, they often, they stop in 62. Like, Algeria, uh, how, how important was Algeria for France until 62? But here you see that it begins in 62. I mean, for oil, of course, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that it was not important before. But for oil, it was really important from 61 to 70. So for one decade, the oil, oil so I'll, we can say part of Fordism was uh, uh, built, was, uh, 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 was possible uh, thanks to uh, Oil from Algeria. Well, that's one point. Then I have time. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. Uh, well, I wanted to say something about financialization. I, I would just want to say briefly one argument about fi financialization. I, I, I just show two or three examples here. There are uh, there are many works, and I can speak f uh, on oil for uh, two hours, but just to say some arguments and to link them with capital accumulation and uh, 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 transformation of cap uh, accumulation regime and with important dynamics. So here another important dynamics, as you know, is uh, financialization, also glo globalization. And uh, it is well known that uh, 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 it is characterized, uh, uh, among other, by shareholder value maximization. The shareholder uh, value maximization um, was really important and uh, it transformed uh, all um, the global, uh, uh, global value chains. Uh, it was, a, it, it, it was a, a pressure to offshore production and meet uh, uh, at the same time short-term financial return expectations. So, um, I, uh, sorry, I, I go a little bit quick here, but just uh, uh, to say that the, 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 we can see a relocation of key material flows and heavy pollut polluting industries. And uh, so, for instance, uh, the uh, all the sector, the mining sector, all the siderurgy uh, uh, in uh, Lorraine, uh, all really important industries were closed. First, they, they, they were... Uh, uh, um, relocated uh, in Foz, Dunkerque, uh, and we were important, importing uh, 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 iron ore uh, in those uh, uh, havens. And then we just, uh, uh, it just it, it, the, 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 the relocation was uh, abroad, and now we are, as you know, uh, we are importing uh, 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 manufactured goods, uh, and we, we France d does not produce uh, uh, a lot of uh, 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 cars or uh, other uh, 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 other commodities uh, uh, that use uh, uh, metals. So, but this is important because so we, we, you have uh, offshoring, so relocation of uh, key material flows, and also uh, 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 this this. Uh, um, this is a reduction of uh, the worker's uh, structural power. So uh, again, uh, the union unionization rate uh, decreases a lot. Uh, those, those sectors were uh, well organized. Um, so as I just want to so show, because one graph explains uh, uh, sometimes uh, 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 in a better way than many sentences. To explain what I uh, what I am saying, look at this. We were exporting a lot of metals, metals good, a lot because we were extracting a lot of metals, and we had 
uh, a lot of uh, industries, heavy industries, and then it's totally changed. Totally. Now we are importing all those, all those goods. So that's, that's why, I, and this is also because of financialization. Not, all, not exclusive, but also because uh, uh, the, the shareholder uh, um, value maximization. And uh, we can see it in this graph. Uh, so this is the difference between, uh, this shows the hidden flows, actually. Those imported, uh, uh, imp those hidden flows uh, uh, of uh, imported goods. And you see that uh, if you take hidden flows, uh, if, if you take all, all hidden flows, you have the black line, but this include uh, fossil fuel. And, but if you, if you take, uh, uh, even without fossil fuel, you have a break again in 62, uh, 72, 73. So from 72 or 73, we can characterize the neoliberalism uh, uh, as uh, one period, uh, one specific period, uh, um, in, in, for which uh, France is importing, uh, is depending of uh, 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 a lot of hidden flows, uh, even without fossil fuels. So that's that's uh, that's important. But, I mean, uh, 200, 300 millions of tons are invisible each year, more or less. Um, and this is, this is, well, just one word. This is also important because um, the territory of French capitalism is becoming really complex. Uh, because all those hidden flows, where are there? Um, what kind of social uh, relations are there? Uh, what kind of institutions are uh, embodied in, in those flows? Uh, it's really complex and it's really challenging. Uh, th the last period is really challenging because uh, it becomes uh, 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 really difficult to analyze uh, uh, what's, what's happening. And there are many new methodology to, to study uh, th th this period. Uh, for instance, using uh, global value chain. Um, but this is, this is uh, I mean, uh, uh, the methodological nationalism, as I call it, uh, is maybe not uh, 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 well, well, maybe not suitable to, to, to study uh, the, the last decade, let's say. Um, well, I, I don't explain those graphs, but this is uh, just, I just read the, the, this sentence, which is uh, relevant. Um, th this, this, this research uh, be begins in the 1990, and they, they show, those researchers, they show that the value added per ton of raw material embodied in exports is 11 times higher in high-income countries, uh, including France, uh, than in those with the lowest income, and 28 times higher per unit of embodied labor. So they, they show that uh, the inequalities, let's say, are increasing in the last period, and ecological uh, inequalities as well. And uh, so the embodied labor, embodied energy, embodied, uh, embodied land and uh, materials, everything is increasing. And the high income uh, countries are, are uh, more and more benefiting uh, of uh, this labor, material, energy. I will conclude in a few minutes. Uh, so well, yeah, uh, I, I, we, we've seen that accumulation regimes partly translate into social, social me, uh, metabolic regime uh, for French capitalism. Um, we we have uh, uh, yeah well I I I, I try to explain uh, why uh, materials shape accumulation regimes <coughs> through the mediation of labor, um, and we now know that the there, is, there are some new aspects also uh, which are challenging for regulation theory because there is a cumulati cumulative aspect of uh, materiality. Uh, so the, the stocks, material stocks of Fordism, infrastructure, built environment, are still there. 
And um, as you know, we depend of uh, uh, this heavy infrastructure. We have to maintain it, sustain it, and it, 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 uh, it, is, it requires a lot of material and energy. So uh, this is, this is a, 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 an aspect which, uh, which is really important for uh, the discussion because so the, we ha you have an addition of material stocks and maybe uh, it creates path dependency, uh, lock-in effects, and you have many uh, specific aspects. And uh, well, this is, this is uh, one uh, uh, I did not mention here, so I wanted to do it. Um, we have new questions also. This is the last slide. Uh, well, first, about those relations between meso and macro regimes or sectorial and uh, national level. Uh, as I said, you can study uh, the ag uh, agricultural uh, sector, you can study, uh, I don't know, uh, the, the, the service sector and many sectors. And you've, you will find different uh, trends, different trajectories. And it's, it's hard really to understand those uh, uh, meso or local trajectories and to, to, to relate them to the uh, macro regime. And this is a common question uh, for material ba uh, flow analysis and regulation theory. Then, okay, I, I will skip many new questions. Uh, what I think important is to deepen the analysis of uh, 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 neoliberalism and platform capitalism. How, c how can you do that? Uh, there are, uh, uh, I know there are uh, many uh, methodological uh, propositions now uh, studying raw material basis of uh, a global value chain. And um, well, uh, you can also work on uh, colonial exchanges uh, so and post-colonial exchanges, recycling flows and so forth. Well, as I said, the main drawback of uh, material flow analysis uh, is the quant quantitative reductionism because, uh, well, I, I show all those graphs, but I mean, it's only one vision of the economy. And it's, a con the, the, you know what I mean? The, the, quant the quantitative reductionism is, is to say, uh, 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 results to say that, the, uh, I, I don't know, uh, sand and gravel, uh, uh, was maybe the most important material. Well, this is maybe true, but it is only because you have one metric and you reduce everything to ton. Bec and you can study, uh, uh, if you study with other flows, with energy flows or with uh, 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 nitrogen flows and I don't know, other water, then you will have another, another vision. And, and it's really important to avoid uh, this reductionism. But if you are working with, uh, uh, if you are working with uh, other uh, social sciences, such as uh, hi uh, history, sociology, political economy, of course, then normally you, you, you won't, you won't uh, 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 fall into this, this trap. And um, so, as I said, nuclear is a really huge problem, really. Because if you, if you, you can conclude from my work that nuclear is good. And uh, I feel, I feel, I feel uh, uh, not, uh, <laughs> I feel, <laughs> I feel bad, let's say, about this. Beca because, uh, as I said, uh, I only show tons. And if you measure nuclear, it's really, really tiny. There are tiny flows. So, Jean Covici would say, oh, nuclear is great. Let's do nuclear because uh, you, you, you avoid a lot of material flows and so forth. So, again, well, this is, this is a problem. Uh, you, you need always to, to bring uh, 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 political aspects, social aspects, and uh, 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 environmental aspects together. Otherwise, you, you will have a, a, a problematic uh, narrative. Um, then, yeah, well, that's, this is um, what I said. Uh, uh, there is a need of uh, inter interdisciplinary works. And most of the researchers are combining uh, political ecology with, uh, I don't know, sociology, with political economy. And they, they, they try to, to, uh, to proceed uh, to, to, uh, uh, an, interdisciplinar, an interdisciplinary uh, 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 
work. Uh, and um, I think this is the, the most, uh, uh, most important uh, uh, aspect. Then, um, well, yeah, I, I have many graphs if you want after, but I will, I will conclude uh, now and we can have a discussion. <coughs> First, thank you for your presentation. It was really clear. It was really helpful. Um, so we're going to present your two papers about the physical economy of France. And we're going to start with the uh, first argument about the dialogue between the long-term material flow MFA, as you presented already, and the history, link to the history uh, of France from 1948 to 2015. And then uh, Lina is going to speak about the regulation theory approach and the material basis of accumulation regimes, um, interaction between material consumption patterns and economic logic of capitalist distinct epochs. So let's start um, my introduction. Um, so as it already been mentioned, France is not a resource rich country. However, the country has been uh, really successful in the global competition of uh, material exchange for the two centuries. So how is that possible? Just quickly um, look uh, what happened between um, uh, 1830 and 1930. So basically, France has experienced a positive uh, physical trade balance. So a greater import of coal in the world until the 1930. So um, it was, was pretty uh, was pretty extraordinary. After that, it became normal for the EU country, but uh, was pretty amazing for this time. Uh, French's also economic activity depend on the material base that is locally, uh, largely locally outside the national territories, uh, and a huge trade with uh, the colonial empire already at this time, even though we saw it uh, getting uh, higher uh, concerning the extraction, uh, for example, in Algeria, it was already occurring at this time. So, briefly, uh, um, during the 40s, so the 1948, from 1948 to 1973, so um, as it already has been mentioned, in France it was the Trente Glorieuse, uh, which means that we experiment high productivity, high wages, high consumption, high development of social benefits, um, and so on and so forth. But uh, if we look at with uh, domestic material uh, consumption that we he already presents, uh, which is basically the domestic extraction plus the physical trade balance, then we can see that um, that we have uh, a facilitation of the French metabolism with an increase of oil and gas. Uh, as you can see on, on, I don't think you see it from where you are, but basically. Uh, the fossil domestic uh, consumption over the cap uh, capital increased plus 2.49% per year between the uh, 1860 to 1930, and then plus 3.23% uh, per year between the 1948 to 1973. So it was uh, a huge growth that actually drive also the GDP growth uh, at this time. So basically, uh, we just we say that uh, it was mainly due to the export of uh, oil and gas, uh, but inside this export, the, then as he talked about already, the structure of import drastically changed in 1930 to call, um, to go from coal to oil. So basically, if you remember, but uh, in 1930 the coal was 99 percent. Uh, sorry, 95% of fossil domestic material consumption. Then it went to 88% in 1948, and then it went to 23% <coughs> in 1973. So basically, the coal was largely replaced by the oil. Uh, so, so it was a really um, uh, an energy addition more than a substitution uh, that we, we saw at this time. So um, going into the um, Petrolization of the economy, um, so it was really helped through a few things that we already saw, but mainly the Marshall Plan that helped, like uh, they subsisted uh, money for develop more the import, uh, the export of the of the oil. Also, the Genary Plan, which is basically 
uh, plant to stop to the coal production. Uh, also the UGP, which is uh, why it should, it's just uh, the new infrastructure to um, uh, to export to export again more more oil. So um, so basically, my point is to say that many of these exportation were actually the sources of the Trente Glorieuse. Actually, two-thirds of the French economic growth is a mechanism reduced of the expansion of fossil fuels uh, consumption. Then, as he talked, it, uh, he talked about before, there was like the relationship between uh, mass consumption and mass production that increased the wages. Uh, you have, uh, at this time also, France was an exporter of biomass and second world agricultural exporters. Uh, we have, through also this uh, huge exports of uh, oil and, and gas, multiplication of infrastructure projects uh, and the strong growth of the motor vehicle industry. Uh, yeah. Then, if we stick up again with the um, historical part, a um, few words about the neoliberalism that my colleague then going to explain it more. Um, from 1974 to 2015, uh, first, uh, wait, maybe we didn't see. So basically, um, first, uh, what we can mention, which is uh, really important, is the whole show that happened in 1973 to 1979. Obviously, that opened a new period and uh, had the growth of the energy imports. But uh, so then, uh, after 1979, the domestic extraction and the, um, and the domestic um, uh, material consumption slightly fluctuate downward for several decades, and the, the, there is a decrease of the GDP material intensity. So we can ask if it was uh, maybe it could be interpreted as a post-industrial transition or maybe a, a better energy efficiency. But actually, it uh, always depends on how you calculate it, obviously. And uh, as he already mentioned, um, if we move to another way to calculate it to the material footprint, which is basically the domestic extraction plus the world trade balance, then you end up to have this, uh, this graph. And as he already, I'm not going into details because he already explained it, but basically the difference between the two are um, the, inf the hidden inflow inflows. So basically, um, when we were taking into account more the domestic material consumption, which is, uh, was to mention that it's one of the main indicators to assess the national material dynamic nowadays, and that the European Commission proposed the resource efficiency roadmap as the GDP over the DMC, so the GDP over the domestic material consumption, and that's it's uh, an indicator for green growth strategy. And this DMC doesn't include the upstream raw material related um, to import and export originating from outside of the uh, local um, of the local economy. While uh, with the material footprint, then you include um, you make the link between the beginning of a production chain uh, to where, how the raw material extract from the natural environment until the end uh, where the product or services is consumed. So uh, I think it's worth uh, to mention that. Uh, briefly, how to calculate this uh, material footprint, so you already said, but basically the raw trade balance is uh, the difference between the raw material extraction imported minus the raw uh, material extraction exported. Um, so, um, So how is that possible? So I'm just briefly uh, mention it, but uh, that's what uh, Lina is gonna more focus on. So the, the, all the, um, sp the speech about the regulation approach, liberation and globalization, financial accumulation regime. But uh, basically my point is to say that um, um, this accumulation regime that play a crucial role of the decoupling of the GDP growth and energy in the most industrial uh, economy by make, making the relocation, relocation and terrorization possible. So it's not due to uh, uh, a better energy transition or, um, or rather a new arrangement, but it's more due to an, an uneven ecological exchange with the outsourcing of the polluting and material consuming and energy consuming activity to the global south. 
uh, we can also see this, uh, I find it interesting to uh, see it with the, also with the renewable energy, uh, because obviously solar panels and uh, wind turbines are required a rare raw metal also, that involve a strong meta m mobilization of material for their extraction, that's outside the European Union too. Also, the, the speaking about the agriculture, and um, because I have to be quick, also we can, it, the nuclear is worth man mentioning, as he said, um, because it's also uh, a reason why, um, the, the development of nuclear is also the reason why we, we less use fossil fuels, blah, 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 we already talked about it, but uh, so like the, there is uh, really a massive development uh, plan for nuclear energy adopted in 1974, and that's linked to the construction of 58 uh, nuclear reactors, which, uh, which obviously reduced these fossil fuels imports. But uh, that leads us to a lot of discussion because, um, while well, obviously these uh, nuclear have a big waste, waste problems. Um, so that's it for my point, but I was really trying to give you an historical uh, point of view and just to, to highlight um, that through this um, material flow analysis and uh, the, the historical, historical part, we can show that France has been actually one of the um, great parasites, as is mentioned in his documents. And, uh, well, je, pardon. Uh, and then we're going to see the variation of metabolic trajectory of the French economy that we just described with uh, Lina. So the second dimension that we think uh, is important to, to focus on from the analysis that you showed us um, has, to do with the, has to do with the specific um, characteristics of the pattern of material consumption in the neoliberal uh, epoch um, against the background of the argument that um, the dematerialization, the deindustrialization of French capitalism um, is accompanied by successful uh, green transition policies and higher energy efficiency. So far from that, the empirical analysis that we have seen um, shows that the material flows on the basis of French capitalism uh, have, are no less harmful than in the period of the fossilist uh, post-war um, regime of Fordism from the perspective of the global distribution of the ecological costs of this material consumption. So what has changed is the way in which the ecological burden is being externalized through the transactions with the countries of the global south. And um, we think that is a very interesting perspective that um, arised from the analysis. And we also think that it is important, um, it is interesting that the insights of the regulation theory uh, have been used, uh, and particularly the logic of the transition between different accumulation regimes in order to understand the economic logic behind the um, shift in the material consumption patterns that we have witnessed. So, um, according to the regulation theory, there is a periodization of French capitalism um, uh, into two uh, accumulation regimes, the Fordist and the neoliberal accumulation regime, uh, which methodologically, the analysis of these regimes is methodologically based on treating um, each one of them as a coherent whole of social relations and um, by explaining the dynamics of its uh, accumulation regime as reflecting the needs of reproducing the economic logic behind the social relationships um, that, um, uh, that compose the economic uh, basis. So the fordist regime that came to prevail in France uh, during the era of the post-war reconstruction uh, as was mentioned already, uh, maybe very quickly here, uh, was based on high productivity gains that were allowed through the large-scale production and mass consumption. And uh, this all was in a context of relatively high uh, levels of wages and a relatively strong um, welfare state. And however, this, um, 
uh, this regime entered into a crisis from the mid-1970s onwards um, because of the inability of the domestic market to sustain the high levels of, profit of, uh, of productivity and this led to a search for external sources of demand through exports and, um, yeah, and to a, an increased relevance of price competitiveness. So the foundations underlying the, the accumulation regime were transformed through such a process and the transition to the neoliberal accumulation regime was characterized by the internationalization of trade flows, um, by, the, by cost reduction strategies through uh, adjustments of wages and through the relocation of parts of the production process into uh, countries of the global south. And uh, this is the context in which we see uh, the increasing relocation of parts of the productive base of the developed uh, capitalist countries into countries of the global south. And uh, financializa the financialization of French capitalism is here understood as both an outcome and a cause of this process. Um, Yes, but maybe it's more interesting to go into understanding um, the decoupling between the indicators of domestic material consumption and material footprint uh, against the, the backdrop of this overall restructuring of, uh, of capitalist dynamics. And um, the difference here, as was already explained, is that the material footprint approach uh, includes uh, the materials that are needed throughout the whole chain for the production of a final imported product and also is able to account for the materials that even though not uh, incorporated directly into the final product are necessary still for the, um, uh, for the different uh, intermediate processes uh, till we arrive at the final stage of the imports. Even if these, uh, even if these material f material flows are staying inside the exporting country, uh, yes, and are not uh, directly figuring into the imports of the importing country, um, and uh, the context in which this has been happening, of course, is the offshoring of uh, of parts of the productive base of French capitalism that previously have been um, carried out domestically, such as, for example, industrial sectors, uh, such as the uh, metal sector or intermediate uh, products or equipment um, sectors. Uh, and this, this could explain the divergence that we see here uh, increasingly happening from the mid-1970s onwards, and this would be the link with the accumulation um, dynamics that were already uh, discussed. So, a main point uh, to, to end up with this, the, a main point that we think arises from that analysis um, is that the, um, the tendency of capitalist accumulation to, um, to externalize the costs of its material um, consumption hasn't hasn't been altered with the transition to neoliberalism, but rather what has changed is that it has been rendered less visible and less easily detectable, so it renders other kinds of uh, approaches necessary in order to understand the dynamics that are actually happening. And um, in the end, uh, a conclusion that uh, we can draw is that both of these uh, accumulation regimes are indicative of um, what has been termed an imperial mode of living. Um, in regard to the material aspects of the consumption, production and distribution relations um, uh, underpinning uh, the functioning of the, of the capitalist economies, not only maybe of the French uh, one, but also of the developed um, industrialized countries generally. Uh, and this has, been, um, this has been the case with the Fordist accumulation regime and the um, coal imports that allowed uh, the high product productivity of uh, agriculture and industry uh, in the earlier Fordist uh, era. Uh, in the later Fordist era, this has been the case with uh, cheap uh, oil imports uh, that even allowed uh, France to arise as one of the most dynamic agricultural exporters from the mid-1970s onwards. Uh, and this continues to be the case with the, um, um, uh, with the outsourcing that we see in, neoli in, in, the, in neoliberalism and from which neoliberalism profits in order to maintain high levels of profitability but maybe also to maintain high levels of material consumption while at the same time uh, adapting a green transition uh, discourse. Uh, 
however, what we to to finish with our comments uh, very quickly, what we were thinking that would be interesting here to um, to contribute um, is that even though we we consider uh, this kind of continuities that we can trace between the Fordist and the, the neoliberal accumulation regime very important. Um, Maybe also uh, looking into the qualitative differences between uh, these two regimes would be something interesting in order to detect more uh, aspects of the interaction between the capitalist accumulation and the material basis of our societies. And what we would propose uh, could be interesting would be to go beyond maybe the uh, level of consumption norms and the, the level of the macroeconomic interactions between uh, the consumption and the production side of the economies to see what is happening on the level of the organization of production itself. Uh, because it can be observed that the material flows um, uh, are being incorporated into the production on the basis of radically different um, organization of social relations in the workplace. So on the one hand, uh, the extensive uh, materiality of Fordism um, evolved in a context of very strict and hierarchical uh, production of organization around uh, the assembly line. Uh, it evolved in a context of very exhaustive uh, division of human labor into simplified repetitive tasks and uh, a very ex extensive also control of the workers' movements and, um, and pace of rhythm within the, the factory. Uh, on the other hand, the still extensive but offshore materiality of neoliberalism uh, we see is being accompanied by the flexibilization of the content and the conditions of work um, in line with the spatial fragmentation of the production process. We see also that there is an unprecedented intensi intensification of, uh, of work and also an enlargement of the duties that have to be performed uh, during work in the form of, of flexible specialization of multitasking and so on. So, uh, what we want to say with that is that maybe it seems uh, important that the imperial mode of living in all its variations doesn't come only with uh, relations of exploitation between the global north and the global south, but, it's, but it also comes with relations of exploitation within uh, the countries of the global north and therefore we consider interesting an analysis that is sensitive to, to the, the social relations on the basis of which materials and material flows are being incorporated into the production process. And just to conclude with our questions, um, so the f for the first question maybe we could, also, we could again go back to the international dimension of the uh, distribution of ecological costs un unevenly uh, on the global scale and maybe we could ask how this could fit um, in the context of the recent developments in, in, on the level of environmental uh, politics that we see on an intergovernmental level and um, more specifically maybe we could ask if it is possible to see environmental policies nowadays as reinforcing and consolidating the kinds of um, offshore, uh, of offshoring of material activities uh, that, that we have seen as the dominant uh, paradigm of ecological relations between the global north and the global south. Sorry, and the second question is way more um, wide. It's just like to start maybe a debate uh, between us because um, so we, have, we are now in the COP26 and since, since 2009 there was this, uh, the industrial country have promised like a lot of money to compensate all this uh, problem that uh, were issued from this, um, the climate damage that we made in, in, uh, in the global south, but it's still not occurring. And I was, um, we were wondering how does this uh, looking also all the um, to go back in the historical uh, analysis and to uh, use all this work that, uh, that have been made could actually change uh, polit policy, public policies and could actually have a concrete uh, impact. Um, I know it's a wide question, but uh, it's going to be interesting to speak about it. Um, that's it. Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I, 
I'm, I'm really bad uh, about policies question. <laughs> I, <laughs> so I, I won't answer the second one. Uh, I follow uh, Robert Boyer uh, analysis uh, and way of thinking research. I, I, I am not normative, so I, I, I have nothing to say. I'm really, uh, I hope my works, uh, uh, my researchers help uh, uh, for political debates, I, I'd be happy uh, if it helps. But uh, I usually, I, 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 I well, I, I have nothing to say about policies. Uh, it's yeah. Uh, maybe I can say something later, but I, I feel really uncomfortable <laughs> with policies uh, question. And what, why, while uh, well, in my practice of research uh, I try to avoid uh, this this aspect but uh, it is difficult because uh, as maybe you probably uh, maybe you know uh, uh, the reviews ask you uh, uh, when you submit a paper uh, they ask for uh, the policy uh, uh, aspect of your research and I feel also Comfortable, uncomfortable with uh, uh, the reviews and journals. Uh, well, thank you for uh, your uh, uh, your quick summary of, of those papers. Uh, I'm happy that you mentioned uh, agriculture also because I, I I did not talk about the fact that. France is exporting a lot of biomass since the 70s, and this is new also because uh, France always imported biomass and now the, the, agri the agricultural sector uh, is, uh, changed totally uh, uh, and uh, I mean for, for 40 years, 45 years and uh, I, I did not mention that so I, I'm, I, I would like to thank you to, uh, to have done it. Uh, now yeah, the first question, so do I think that environment and policies can be considered as an additional arena for the establishment of mechanism permitting the externalization of ecological costs? Well, again, uh, I don't know, I, I, I did not study the impacts of uh, environmental policies. Uh, I learn uh, about it uh, from other works, uh, and well, yeah, we th th there is a huge greenwashing, uh, as you know, and uh, and of course, uh, when the European Commission or France or a uh, huge uh, uh, international organization promotes uh, some. Uh, uh, some environmental policies, well, they always serve some interest, but this is a, a, a you, need, you need to study it with uh, um, other tools than I, I have. Uh, but, uh, well, you can suspect that sometimes it's, as you, 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 you ask it, uh, uh, sometimes it permits the externalization of, of ecological. Well, well, at least we can say that uh, uh, there were thousands of uh, norms, rules, uh, policies, uh, new politics, a new deal, a new blah, 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 but uh, nothing happened. Uh, so uh, there were some minor changes. We can detect a little bit of uh, dematerialization for some countries. But globally, I mean, it, uh, the, the, it's a disaster. So, uh, well, you can suspect that environmental policies do not uh, 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 deal with uh, social power relation. And that, that's the point. I mean, uh, and that's why uh, I feel close to uh, Marxist approaches, uh, because they always uh, put sh social conflicts and uh, social interests at the core of the analysis, and uh, uh, there were well, th th there is a now a, a really nice. I mean, uh, for some deca de dec decades now, uh, really nice literature about uh, uh, 
social blocks, uh, which are described really well by Amable and Palombarini. And well, you, you, you see that society is composed by many social groups and alliances, and there are interests uh, defending some environmental policies and other. And other. That's, why, that's why you have now uh, several uh, ecological propositions. You have uh, uh, technocratic uh, ecological propositions. You have, uh, I don't know, a Keynesian uh, uh, ecological proposition, a Marxist ecological proposition, and, and they, will, they will fight, and this is normal. They, they are proposing uh, different futures, and I, I'm, I am not here to, to choose one. But I just can tell you that, of course, uh, 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 they, they, they are not... Uh, uh, they are exclusive. They, you cannot, you cannot, uh, uh, you cannot pursue a technocratic, uh, 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 let's say, environmentalism, and uh, and at the same time, uh, uh, Marxist uh, uh, environmentalism. Uh, so I, I just, I just always say that, uh, uh, yeah, the, the, you, you, you have to uh, uh, really. Uh, see uh, how materials uh, are and how economic sectors are, are uh, 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 related to uh, uh, power structure uh, uh, and power relations. And if you if you if you if you don't do it. Uh, well, I, I think your your analysis will be will be not accurate enough. But that's that's my approach of research, and uh, I know that uh, this is not the, the usual, uh, but uh, approach. But anyway, uh, so I don't answer really well your questions. I am a bit sorry about it. Uh, but but yeah, well, I, I I did it a little bit. Uh, uh, though I, I can I can just. Uh, show you, remember you those graphs. This is uh, 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 the graph showing energy additions. And uh, well, this this stopped in 2005. But this is only just to mention that there were environmental policies here, 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 here. Every year there were an environmental policies, and we at the global scale there are only uh, uh, energy additions and. And so you, you don't see at all the, 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 the impacts of those uh, 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 policies. And the same is true for uh, material extraction. This is material extraction at the global scale. And you don't even see, well, 2008, the 2008 crisis. It's just a little bit, uh, 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 a little de decrease in the, in the rise. So... I mean, this is unbelievable. So, I mean, all all the, the 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 all those policies. I mean, we can say at least that they are not attacking the problem at its roots, maybe or something. Now, I I, I have some ideas, but I I maybe uh, they're they're. I mean, in in those institutions, they will probably be no policies. Uh, uh, which will attack those roots precisely because they, those institutions were not built to, 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 to deal with this. So, well, you see that, well, uh, environmental policies are uh, maybe not uh, 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 accurate enough or important enough. So it's, it, answer, it, it answers a little bit uh, your, your analysis, well, your, your, your uh, uh, questions. Then, uh, well, uh, maybe there are other questions. Uh, yeah, I will answer.